thousand years, how does one reconcile the timelines? It is, for me, easy. I suspect that most of the events described in the Bible refer to a far earlier date than commonly thought. I am absolutely certain that this is the case in regards to the Bible's Old Testament, whose pre-Diluvian accounts are probably that of Atlantis. Proof of this fact lies in the many unoriginal stories contained in the Bible, stories which appear to be nothing more than retellings of earlier mythological accounts. Although Christians claim that Jesus is the Son of God and made a noble sacrifice for mankind, they often have trouble describing the nature of the sacrifice. Members of the occult, however, have convinced me that this sacrifice was quite real and Jesus did indeed take an incredible risk for us in that his fate was not certain and his soul was up for grabs. So noble was this act, whatever it was, that he was found quote unquote perfect before the gods. Since the true nature of this sacrifice has been removed from the Bible and since members of the occult only spoke on the matter with guarded tongues, all I can truly tell you is that it was quite selfless and has nothing to do with dying on a cross. Satan promised those in hell much spoils after Jesus' death, but instead Jesus released many spirits who were bound in prison. These spirits rejoiced and turned against those who had tormented them in hell. Satan apparently lost control of entire realms because of this. If you recall, Jesus rose from the dead and into heaven three days after he was killed. But during those three days he was dead, he apparently fell into the underworld and started trouble for Satan there too. A vague mention of this event occurs in the Bible. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, we read, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put into death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. I have long heard Satanists make reference to the time when Jesus descended into the prison of spirits after his death but I thought it was just more of their hero and villain swapping that they're so good at. Everyone knows Jesus went up, not down. But then I was directed to this Bible verse, which shook my view regarding the nature of his sacrifice. The goddess Lilith is associated with a host of other goddesses, including Hecate, Astarte, Isis, Sekhmet, Virgo, Venus, Ishtar, Inanna, Aradia, Davsina, Selene, Diana, Az, Babylon, Kali, Tiamat, Al Uzza, and Gaia. Although this goddess is mostly associated with the moon. She is said to both have good and bad aspects, and true to that logic, she is often spoke of as Lilith, who was consumed or possessed by a much more ancient goddess named Tiamat, as if Lilith is now the body that Tiamat walks in. Lilith is the feminine principle personified. Tiamat is said to be the most ancient of God's enemies, long before the fall of Lucifer, and she spawned a race of wicked giants and demons. In Babylonian legend, Tiamat was called the monster of chaos and waged war against the gods. Finally, Marduk defeated Tiamat, split her in two, and used her flesh to create the universe. This battle between the angels and the older gods goes unmentioned in the biblical Genesis account, but remains in the Greek tradition. According to Greek mythology, 
Zeus, along with his brothers Poseidon and Hades, defeated the older gods called the Titans and banished them to Tartarus, the Greek underworld. These Titans, who were the offspring of Gaia, once ruled the earth, their brutish nature corrupting and spoiling the planet. This race of Titans even attempted to make slaves and sport out of the angelic race, but Jehovah and Satan cast down the Titans. It is also worth mentioning that Prometheus sided with Zeus and the other Olympians in the War of the Titans. Although the Greek mythology does not mention it, eventually a flaming rock was hurled to the earth from space, killing this race of terrible beasts and casting their souls into Tartarus. It is important to bear in mind that there were two wars or desertions in heaven. The first was between the angels and the spawn of Tiamat, and the second heavenly conflict was between Satan's angels and Jehovah's angels. The only trace of this event in the Genesis account is subtle and easily overlooked. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, we read, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Replenish the earth is certainly interesting wording for a universe that was supposedly only a week old. I'm inclined to believe that these seven quote-unquote days of creation were instead phases as opposed to literal 24-hour periods. There are more scientific traces of a beastly race who were destroyed by a large falling rock, and this race we call the dinosaurs. Perhaps these monsters of the past aren't the bumbling creatures we take them for, but an intelligent and powerful race that once ruled and desecrated the earth. One of the best retellings of this story can be found in the literary works of H.P. Lovecraft, who used the terms ancient ones and elder gods to refer to the titans and the angels, respectively. A fact related in his novels and echoed by a few in the occult is that the ancient ones are chained in darkness and that there is a certain celestial radiation arriving from space that is utterly toxic to these titans. There is a day coming, however, when the rays of the stars will no longer be toxic to the old ones, and this day will be marked by some kind of rare astronomical event. After this event in the sky, the wicked god Azigdoth, also called Hades and Pluto, will free and lead the titans out of their prison. Black magicians also have a long list of titles for Lilith and have much reverence for her because she is among those who give them the dark gift of transformation. Among these titles are Queen of the Cliff Off, Queen of the Underworld, Queen of the Dead, Queen of the Vampires, Queen of the Sabbat, Queen of Hell, Queen of the Witches, Queen of the Shells and Shades, Mother Earth, and the Mother Goddess. She is the Bride of Satan and the Mother of all Demons also called Lilithu. Lilith is often associated with the Red Sea, which is said to be a place where she spawned and instructed demons. The screech owl and dove are Lilith's sacred animals. The US dollar bill contains a small tiny image of what is commonly thought to be a spider, but is in fact an owl. At Bohemian Grove, members of the elite perform rituals and mock sacrifices before a 35-foot stone owl. This owl, which was long suspected to be symbolic of the Canaanite god Moloch, is in fact symbolic of Lilith, who is Babylon the Great and the Bride of Lucifer. Tiamat may also be symbolized by a red dragon and is known as a devouring goddess. In the Bible, Lilith goes by the titles Whore of Babylon, Mother of Harlots, and Babylon the Great. This woman is depicted holding a golden cup and wearing many precious stones while robed in the colors purple and scarlet. Scarlet is just plain red with a slight hint of orange. The imagery commonly relates her as riding a scarlet beast. This woman is described as drunk.